Okay, guys and gals, are you ready for another Battle Room Bible Study video? The topic for this video is the mark of the beast. And what this video isn't, it, it, it isn't what is the mark of the beast. Well, it, it kind of is what is the mark of the beast, but what isn't the mark of the beast, all right? So, uh, first off, I hope that everybody has a, a really good cup of coffee. And, uh, you know, I'm probably going to upset uh, a few friends and a few of my relatives because, uh, you know, I've always had an interest in this and uh, the information that I'm going to share is based off God's Word. But, you know, lately, uh, you guys know I'm, I'm new to Facebook and I see a lot of things on Facebook. And so I started asking my friends and uh, my relative, what they thought of the mark of the beast, and I just played into it. I just played into it like I'm a person in society, and I just agree with what society says, and then I just let everyone just tell me what they think, and and uh, that way I don't, I don't really contaminate the waters. And so, what I hear from everybody on average is what society says is what is the mark of the beast, but really it, it's it's incorrect what society says because. And I don't, I don't want to offend anybody, I don't, but there can be uh, busybodies in the church that, that apply their beliefs based on how they feel, uh, on, on how they see God as opposed to going to God's Word. I will give you an example of what I mean. A great example, being new to Facebook, I see a lot of this. I will see like... Uh, you'll see the, the pictures and people praying that everybody would be healed of sickness. But you can't go into God's Word and find that prayer. No. Um, healing in multitudes, that was something specific that Christ gave the apostles. That was for a biblical period, but it wasn't put out there for us to take a prayer and ask that everybody be healed of cancer. What's, what's, what's Christ's prayer? Christ himself asked that God's will would be done. So if we pray that God would just heal everybody, is that kind of uh, poking God in the eye? Uh, think about it. Think about it. Maybe maybe God doesn't want to heal. Maybe God gets to some people because they do have uh, something uh, wrong. Uh, maybe God's working through somebody because this person has cancer and this person comes into their life to serve them and through that this person finds Christ. So really, uh, when someone is a lot of times when someone comes to me and they ask for prayer, I say, yes, I will pray for you, but before I pray for you, do you understand that I always pray in the will of my Father, see? And so it's easy to just begin praying in a way that isn't biblically correct, and I'm not here to tell anyone you're praying wrong, but what I am to say is it's very easy to begin preaching God's Word all the way outside of God's Word. So let's talk about the mark of the beast. Uh, let's go ahead and open in prayer. Lord Father in heaven, Father, uh, we thank you for your son Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray that my words would be minimalized. I pray that you would be glorified through this message and that people would uh, begin turning to your word for your direction in their lives. And we just pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. So, all right, the, the mark of the beast. Uh, so, I've always had a, a great interest in this, and I'm not a, I'm certainly not a, a scholar in the book of Revelations, and I don't think there's really anybody that knows the, the entire book of Revelation. There isn't. There isn't. There's a lot of great theology out there on it, and but the problem with Revelations is you can begin reading more into it just like when people read more into sharing God than what's in His Word, per se. 
But the other thing with revelations I found is it can be one word. One word that we don't think about that gets us on that track for hunting in the right direction. So I'm going to start in Revelations chapter 13, verse 16 and 18. Here we go. It. Now there's your first word. It. It. It also forced. There's your second word. Forced. This is something that's being forced upon. You have to ask yourself, who's forcing it? Is it the it, or is it the individual that's receiving the mark? That's a question. It also forced all people. All. What does all mean? It means great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their forehead, so that they could not buy or sell anything sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. Now, let's look at something. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads. Now, look at the word slave there. A, a slave, in biblical days, was very well taken care of by his master. So a slave who has a master who is fed, even he would receive the mark of the beast to eat. Okay, don't miss that. So now they can buy, they can sell. Verse 18, this calls for wisdom. Now, as an example, what we see in social media, Facebook, about how people pray, where's wisdom? The book of James tells us, God says, you ask for wisdom, you will receive that without reproach. And without reproach means God's not going to He's not going to be critical on you for asking. He's going to give it without reproach. He's going to give you wisdom. It doesn't matter how, how ridiculous of a question it is. When you ask for wisdom, God grants it. But how do you get it? You get it out of His Word. You don't get wisdom by uh, just pulling in what society's telling you and you don't spew it back out outside of God's Word. That's wrong. And God does not want that. That's a sin. That's very simple. Okay, so now I want to go to... Uh, Zechariah uh, chapter 11. Remember something. Remember this. Never go to another man to ask for direction in God's Word until you have read God's Word, prayed God's Word, and you go to Him with God's Word and you receive nourishment and apply it back into God's Word. When you don't have your Bible and you go to someone and you ask about God, you're going to be misled. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 17. Woe to the worthless shepherd who deserts the flock. May the sword strike his arm and his right eye. May his arm be completely withered, his right eye totally blinded. I love Zechariah. It's always got all this little stuff in there that you can find throughout the Bible. And for those that say there's no God and they're an atheist, isn't that crazy? The Bible was wrote over this amazing time span and yet here Zechariah has stuff in it from early days and then you find it later and you're realizing that man uh, God's penmanship was all over this no man or men you know what it would be easier to say that one man orchestrated all this in a bunch because once you get uh, more than one man in there then that's when that's when you find the falseness of this but one man couldn't have lived all those years so it's all God's writing so, uh, once again, woe to the worthless shepherd who deserts the flock. May the sword strike his arm and his right eye. May his arm be completely withered, his right eye totally blinded. Can I ask you something? What is that? That is something visual. Visual. You can see, you can see the, the main guy. You can see the withered arm. So if this was a person that was going to be buying and selling, just hypothetically, uh, they're going to be operating in any way in society. It's going to be visual for everyone. You see what I'm saying? Okay, hold that thought. Ezekiel 9.4. Ezekiel 9.4. I, I love, my, my, I love my, my phone Bible. And If you have a smartphone, you've got to get the Bible on there and get your pornography off. Get God on your Bible 
God will steer you, okay? Uh, ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom. He'll give it without reproach. 9-4, okay. And he said to him, Go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. So this is a mark. Now we see that a mark can be something for good or bad. And uh, it's visible. It's going to be a visible mark. Now, let's go to Revelation 16 too. And guys, this is just how I read it. This is how I read it. You have to pray about it. You have to read your Bible. The first angel went and poured out his bowl in the land, and ugly, festering sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped its, its, there's that word, its image, its image. Remember that other word forced? Now we have its image and it was forced. Now let's talk about this a little further. Revelations 19.2 uh, Revelations 19, chapter 19, verse 2. Oh, I'm sorry. 19, verse 20. I didn't think that looked right. Near the end of the... Uh, <laughs> 19, verse 20. There we go. Uh, high boy can't count. Uh... But the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet, who had performed the signs on its behalf. There's that word. There's that word. And with these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. So we have the word its now and his. We have his and its. So what is it? What is it? What is it? So now I want to ask you a question. So we know that no man can be snatched, the salvation of no man can be snatched out of the hands of Christ, right? So if this is a person and they're going to force it, they force it, right? And they force it, now let's take me, me hypothetically. So I am a man after God's own heart. I start my day in God's word and prayer. I have my Bible with me. I love my phone, my, my smartphone, and my Bible because when my eyes fall on something that shouldn't or I'm tempted where I shouldn't, I go to God's Word, I pray, I ask for forgiveness, I ask for strength, and to the end of my day, you know, I start my day out asking for directions, and it's better to do that than ask for forgiveness at the end of the day. Because, see, you ask for forgiveness all day long, at the end of the day, I just humble myself and I thank the Lord. That, 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 that I humble myself and I thank Him for Christ being in my life. And, and my, my wife, too. We just we pray so much. And so, now if you think about it, if you think about it, are you telling me that if I receive the mark of the beast, now let's talk about what the mark of the beast is. Some people say the mark of the beast is a chip implant in the hand and the forehead. I see on Facebook people say, well, it's put on the hand so they can worship and they see it. Okay, well, mm, okay. Well, are you telling me that if I receive a chip in my hand and my forehead, that that damns me eternally? Because that's what you see. Okay? The well, last time I checked, these chips that they're installing into people, they're putting us installing. I got my chip installed today. Uh, I, don't want, I don't want anyone to uh, think that I am for a chip being put in my body. I'm not. It's not natural. But these chips that they have, it's for uh, bartering in society. You can badge in through work. You can have your social security number. Whole, everything about your life, they can track you, right? Well, is it safe to say that really, other than something foreign being put in your body, it can serve both good and bad, such as on YouTube right now, on your smartphone, you have both good and bad. Isn't it your choice? Oh, choice. Okay, let's talk about that word forced. Remember I told you one word is forced? All right, forced. Who forces this? Think about it. If it's a chip and they hold me down and put it in there, does that... I've heard people say that if you had the chip, you'd have to cut your own hand off. Really? If they put me, hold me down, put a chip in me, do, 
do I, do I lose my salvation or would I have to cut my hand off? Now, if they put it in my forehead, am I going to have to cut my head off? Well, that's suicide. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Now, I'm not saying it isn't going to be a chip. But I don't think the mark of the beast is a chip necessarily. Why? Think about it. It's forced onto the person. Hmm. All right, let's get into this. Modern day today. Who is it that has the right arm covering and the forehead covering? Isn't that a Muslim? Oh, a Muslim. Okay, so now we have this Muslim who's fighting for his religion. And by the way, the mark of the beast. And we have Muslim rising. Uh, was this forced upon him? Did someone hold that Muslim down and put that upon him? Or did they just say, if you're going to be a part of us, get it on? And so what he do? He willingly put it on. And what do you see? You see outward rebellion. You see evil. He chose it. He chose it. And it's not a religion about uh, it's not the religion like you think it of. It's a religion about death. Death to the world. Oh, and so what do we have? It was forced. But what we have is this. The mark of the beast is going to be something that will be forced upon society, but what it will, what it will require is for each individual to step up and allow it. You tell me where the wisdom is. Right, there is no wisdom. Right? If you are a believer in Christ and you're turning to God's Word, He's going to give you wisdom. And I'll guarantee you, you're not going to step up and say, Mark my arm. So now you're saying, but it's a chip. Oh, really? Is it really? Well, let me ask you a question. If you have the mark of the beast, am I correct, that you can buy and sell and you can barter wherever you go? So if you have a chip plant in your hand and your forehead, how is the common guy on the street going to recognize you? Remember, we go back to, we go back to uh, Zechariah. They were visible. It was something visible. It's an outward showing of who you believe in. And it, it, it's a God. There's only one God, the Alpha and Omega, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. This God is an it. It's a God it's a God that has been made up by mankind, and they're going to worship that God. Okay? Last time I checked, if I, if there's a chip, if there is a chip, and I receive that, who's my Savior? Jesus Christ. That doesn't change my salvation. It doesn't change my salvation at all. Why? I don't worship a false god. I worship Christ. And who's to say that if I get a chip, hey, remember your cell phone you can use for bad or good. A camcorder like you're watching me off now, good or bad. My computer, I'm going to upload this. Bad or good, right? It's the individual that has the opportunity to take everything they have in life and use it for however they want. Who is it forced upon them by? Well, it's called conforming. If you are worshiping that false god and you are to conform, you will have to do it. But it's you that reaches out and says, I accept. And that, my friend, is the mark of the beast. However that mark is placed, whether it be a sword, tattoo, markings, whatever. Now, um, don't say it's tattoos, because I have a lot of friends who are very devout Christians, and they have tattoos, okay? Now, does that get your dog hunting for a moment? Think about it. We don't say someone has the mark of the beast by the way they look. It's an outward showing. We say... The mark of the beast is by those who 
have worshipped the false god. How do you know what that is? How do you know? Ah, hang on. I'm looking for something. I can't keep track of this in my head. That's why I got God. <laughs> How do we know? Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. This calls for wisdom. How do you get wisdom? Reading in God's Word. If, you're, if you have a daily diet of God's Word, you have a daily diet of the greatest tool God's given you to what? To humble yourself before Him and gain that wisdom, prayer. You're reading God's Word and you're praying every day. God will give you wisdom. And God will show you the mark of the beast. No man knows what the mark of the beast is. No man knows all of Revelations. But God has wisdom He wants to give you. I will guarantee you right now that if tomorrow I get a chip implant, which I don't plan on it. My truck still has an old carburetor on it. Um, if I received a chip implant tomorrow, it would be to better my life, and it would certainly be to better my uh, effectiveness in spreading God's word, and that is the greater will of God's kingdom. But if tomorrow someone said, I am a God, I am a God, and for you to worship me, you'll have to receive a chip. God gave me wisdom. But for some reason, I don't believe it's going to play out that way. Why? It's too easy. God says, this calls for wisdom. Calls for wisdom. The mark of the beast is going to be something that's going to happen over time. It's going to go along with pestilence, earthquakes, starvation, lawlessness. Oh, do you see lawlessness in our world? It's going to go along with what seems right, looks wrong. Do you see that in our world? And over time, what do you have? You have an image, an it, that is a god by mankind who's serving that god. You will have false prophets. That's why you need wisdom. To avoid a false prophet, you quit going onto Facebook and listening to something that someone types up that sounds pretty, and you go to God's Word to verify that. And you go in and you battle against that and say, no, that's correct because this is what God's Word actually says. When you do that, you don't have to worry about the mark of the beast. Because what our business is, I'll tell you why I don't, guys, I, I don't know a lot about revelations because my business is about the work of God, spreading the gospel. See, as Christians, what we don't do is we don't do this. We don't say, the end of the world is tomorrow, I'm going to die. No, because Paul says, to die is to gain. To, you're going to gain the kingdom of God, am I correct? And God will always give you grace to get through what you need to go through. And... The reason he's going to give you what you need to go through, what you're going to go through, is because time isn't on hand to worry about what's happening tomorrow. Time is on hand because God wants you to spread the gospel of Christ. And don't spread the gospel of Christ by pretty sayings on Facebook. Spread the gospel of Christ through God's word and only God's word. And remember, Christ says... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. This is Revelation 22, verse 19. And if anyone takes words away from this scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in his tree of life in the holy city, which are described in this scroll. And how many people, how many people go on to Facebook, and they start talking God's Word, and it has nothing to do with God's Word. 
Show me a person that starts spreading God's word off their fingertips that isn't their God's word, and I'll show you a person that doesn't know Revelation chapter 22, verse 19. And I'm not saying that if you study God's word and you share God's word, then you get it wrong because you misconceived it. That's one thing. Because if you keep going into God's word, God will correct you and you'll get it right. Okay? But Jesus Christ is telling you, don't change my word. And you're saying, yeah, okay, okay, so I don't need to change the Bible. What's word? Word is Jesus. Don't change me. Don't change who I am. Don't get on social media and start saying things that I am not because you figure it out. Society has the mark of the beast wrong. We are looking for a chip implant and the mark of the beast is coming from the right and it's going to take people out because they won't know when it's coming. And the next thing you know, they'll be wearing a right arm covering and a head marking. And they'll have never seen it coming. You look at the children of Israel when Joshua crossed the Jordan and those Israelite men had to be circumcised. Why? Let's use the word recircumcised. Why? Because all those who had been circumcised had died in the wilderness. And these new ones didn't know. They didn't know. Don't be that way. Don't say, I didn't know. One day I woke up with this arm covering and a, and a head stamp and I was looking at the God. And you never ever had God's word to show you that that wasn't God. And you're saying, well, I've been, I've been, I've been spreading God all over Facebook, telling people to love God and love Jesus and pray that everybody's healed. That wasn't God. You, you, that wasn't God at all. You got lost in your wilderness, and you were freaking out because of some computer chip and you were right where one day you looked and you didn't know who you were. And isn't it funny? This will come out in rebellion. Look at the rebellion in our world. How many of these people, how many of these people could have read God's Word and they didn't? See? If you don't have wisdom, it's because you didn't read God's Word. Book of James. Book of James. Go into the Book of James. You want wisdom? Read the book of James. That's why I'm in the book of James right now on my channel. So, you have to decide what the... You know, you have to decide whether or not you're going to turn to God's Word. You're not going to get it through my channel. This video is to encourage you to start getting into God's Word daily. Whether you got it in, in paper form or technology form. Okay? So, the mark of the beast, in my opinion, isn't necessarily a computer chip or a chip inserted inside of you. The mark of the beast really is something that happens to a society over time that focuses on a false god. And they're so deluded in their teachings that anybody can come along and grab their attention and you have all society following that way and that my friend is called sheeples sheeples I'm a sheep dog I'm a sheep dog I'm always on the outside of the crowd I'm well armed and I got my eyes and I'm looking and I'm looking and that's what God wants you to be he wants you to be a sheep dog and be aware because uh, these people that are blinded he needs you to get to them don't worry that tomorrow is the end of the age worry that by tomorrow you need to get in there and for those for those that are willing to look to hear to see who Christ is that is what the sheepdog is looking for no, 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 that's what we do that's what my shepherd tells me by being a sheepdog on the outside I can see my shepherd I see my shepherd he will always lead me when you get inside of the sheeple, all you see, all you see is another sheeple in front of you. 
and you don't know where they're going. You can't see where they're going. And you get on Facebook and you see all the sheeple. You see all the sheeple. Sometimes you see someone come through with God's word. And I love that. See, Facebook goes both ways. Good and bad. Good and bad. But we need more sheepdogs spreading God's word. And we need more sheepdogs that aren't worried about the mark of the beast because we're focused on God. That's what we focus on. Okay, now, the, the chip implant. There would be enough on that to hopefully make most people just not want that. That's something I wouldn't want, but, you know, uh, as society is focused on sheeples and they follow, that's what happens. And that's why you see where our world has been today, because just read Revelations. That's where the world will go, but you can keep your eyes on Christ. So, we you say we close in prayer. Lord, Father in heaven, Father, I pray that uh, better men would be after your heart. I pray that better women would stand up for you and seek you in their lives. And I pray, Lord, that the sheepdogs and the, uh, those that stand for you, Father, would take your word and apply it to their life, would take their wisdom that you give them, and they would take it to those who are in need, dire need. Uh, Lord, it's a, it's a lost world. But you're not worried. You're not worried because... Those sheepdogs that, re that read your word and that read every word and that study the little words and that listen and that call for your wisdom, they, Father, will prevail only because of the blood of Christ that was shed on the cross, giving us your grace, your eternal salvation. Father, we glorify you. Everything in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for this technology that we can use to get out to the lost sheeples of the world. And that through one verse at a time, Father, one verse at a time, we can better share your gospel in your Son. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, okay. So, uh, uh, you, you, just have to, you just have to go to the verses that I've read to you and chew them up. You be the deciding factor. You have just been giving enough information that you don't have to go talk to anybody about what I just told you. What do you do? All you have to do is read the Word of God and say your prayers. Say them often. Repeat them. And when you get bored, remember, God's never bored of hearing your prayers. Guys and gals, that's the end of this video. God bless. We'll see you on the next.